The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Five more reasons why Ableton 10 is worth upgrading for. This is a follow-up video to the first one that I did explaining my top five features in Ableton 10, but today I've brought you some that maybe I wasn't aware of, or some that I just straight up was sleeping on, or some that I have learned to use and have become a fan of. Number one, if your sessions look like a big bag of Skittles, Ableton 10 has the solution for you. All you have to do is pick what color you'd like each group. And then you just hit this assign track color to grouped tracks and clips. Boom. Instant cleanup. This used to consume the first 10 minutes of every project that I would open with somebody else. I would just go and kind of color everything the way that I liked it huge time saver. I can't get enough of that. Moving on to number two. Does your song suffer from a weak kick drum? If so, Ableton's drum bus plugin here in Audio Effects has got you covered. Let's just drag this onto the kick for starters. Without it. And let's turn on the plugin. And I'm just going to kind of go in here and Go through a bit of the knobs and let you just kind of hear for yourself as I go what we can do to this kick drum with drum bus. I love the transients. Yay. And of course, like every Ableton plugin, the glorious dry wet control. Now I'm just going to let that speak for itself. As you could see, I kind of went through some of the different drive crunch and uh, filter controls. And then I also love this boom, which kind of adds a little sine wave in under your kick if you want to kind of turn the top kick into an 808. But since I already have a bass line going in this song, I just made a little short one to kind of help the kick be a little bit more thumpier. Do your 808 sound like floppy trash? Are you constantly struggling to fix weak snares that just never cut it? Here at Whole Loops, we can solve your struggle. Introducing Urban Beats Volume 2, the sequel to our blazing hip hop and R&B drum kit. This time, we've doubled the sauce and created the perfect selection of special snares, pop and percussions, and 808s so disrespectful, you'll be getting noise complaints in 60 minutes or less guaranteed. Urban Beats 2 is available only at holoops.com. Moving on to number three. If you love free timing um, and making rhythms and things that aren't quite on the grid, then you are absolutely going to love the nudge feature. Now this is nothing new to MIDI. You always used to be able to grab a clip and hold command and slip it to the right a little bit, but you can now do the same thing to audio on the timeline. And it nudges it kind of based off of how zoomed in you are. So if you want finer control, you can just zoom in a little bit. And uh, like maybe you felt like this was all a little bit early. Slip it late a little bit. Very different feeling when you slip it over to the right a little bit. It's like the secret swag knob inside Ableton. Um, so yeah, nudging on the timeline 
Love it. Use it every day. Number four. Now, this isn't something I can really show you, but by the fact that it hasn't unexpectedly quit on me uh, daily is right off the bat a massive upgrade. I have so many plugins, and uh, like they always say, mo plugins, mo problems, but Ableton 10 has stepped up the stability game massively from Ableton 9, and that makes me so happy. Now, number five is something that I really use in the beginning of songs. Uh, let's see. I kind of like what I did with the kick drum, so let me save that. Oh, and you're going to have to save all your uh, things as a uh, Ableton 10 version, unless you want to overwrite the Ableton 9 version. That's up to you. But here in a blank session, let's say we pulled up a, uh, let's get an 808 going from our packs. Also, man, I know the packs aren't new to Ableton 10, but I really didn't start using packs until Ableton 10. There's some gold inside packs and these are the expansions that you can buy on the Ableton website. I never really had them until recently but man every single time I go in here I end up coming out with an idea and just starting an entire new thing. Um, don't sleep on packs. Anyways get an 808 going so let's jam out. So in Ableton 10 to get your musical typing up you just hit the letter M on your keyboard and now your uh, typing keyboard becomes a piano. All right, so I kind of like that. Let's record it. Just kidding, Ableton already did. Um, what we hit up here is uh, a new kind of pre-recording function. Kind of guesses based off of uh, what you played as the, assuming the downbeat is one, where it should go. And in this instance, it got it correct. Uh, I'm gonna quantize it just a little bit more to make sure it's uh, right on the grid. And boom, that was so much quicker than uh, clicking it in, just kind of being spontaneous and saying, actually, I like that. I'd like to keep that. And that's what this, uh, I don't even remember what the thing is called. Let's go down here and see. Yeah, so that's capture here inside of Ableton 10. I start songs with this and end up clicking the capture button at the beginning of almost every song. And that was one of those features where I was like, nah, I'm probably not going to use that. Tried it once boom, ended up using it almost every time. Well, there you have it, my top five more reasons to switch to Ableton 10. If you weren't already convinced, I hope you are now. I absolutely love this. All my tutorials going forward will be here in Ableton 10, so I'll be seeing you guys next time with another video. Peace out.